Today you are going to learn about tobacco and what I would like for you to do is just listen along through this video presentation and I'm going to explain some of the things that are on the slides in detail to you. At the end of this video presentation, what I would like for you to do is open the Google Docs note taking guide that accompanies this presentation and I would like for you to please fill in the Google Docs notes. You can watch this video again to help you fill it in or you can pull up the presentation yourself. Uh, but for now, I would just like for you to please listen along and learn a little bit more about tobacco today. Okay, the first thing that I wanted you to see, there are about nine key terms today that I'm hoping that you will understand better by the end of this. And we are going to go over these nine terms. Up first, we have nicotine. So nicotine is the compound in all tobacco products that keeps the user coming back and wanting more. So the tobacco agencies, the nicotine is, you know, their golden token into making sure that people purchase the product because it is very addictive. So nicotine helps relieve stress. It helps relieve anxiety. Many tobacco users say that it even helps them feel less hungry. So a lot of times tobacco products are even used to help people that are trying to diet. So nicotine is the chemical in tobacco products that's going to make that person feel very addicted. The unfortunate side effect of nicotine is that it does wear off and it can make the person more irritable and it just makes them come back uh, and want more of the tobacco. Up next is TARS. And you may wonder why we're talking about TARS, but there are actually TARS present in tobacco products, especially in cigarettes. Uh, and this is very similar to the tar that you would find on the pavement on the road. Also, when you burn tar, as you would with vaping or smoking, it does release many carcinogens. And carcinogens are cancer-causing agents. Um, so this does not mean that you, if you smoked one cigarette, you are for sure gonna get cancer. But what it does mean is that there is a lot of data to prove that carcinogens that are in tobacco products uh, significantly increase your likelihood of developing certain types of cancers. Um, tobacco smoke contains over 4,000 chemical compounds and many of those are cancer causing agents. One of those is a compound marketed as rat poison. So this should be even more of a reason to keep you from wanting to put this into your body. Our next term is carbon monoxide. So you may hear on the news, um, people unfortunately sometimes die in their home from carbon monoxide poisoning. We often have these detectors in our home to let us know if we have a carbon monoxide leak. And unfortunately this is in tobacco, uh, in the fumes of tobacco once it is burned. So it is a deadly gas formed during the burning of tobacco. It causes the heart to receive less oxygen than it needs and that is how it ends up causing people to die. And it is colorless and odorless, so you're not going to smell it or see it. All right, leukoplakia. This is patches that will occur in your mouth and it leads to cancer. So a lot of people that use tobacco will develop leukoplakia and it's just white and gray patches. And if you can see here around the teeth, uh, this is a, a case of it where it's not even that bad. So I tried to find a picture that wasn't incredibly graphic, um, but you can see it developing here around this user's teeth and that is leukoplakia. I found this picture from a dentist office. So uh, that is definitely something that is not good because that is a huge indicator of a very serious gum disease that uh, often leads to cancer. So and gum disease is an infection of the tissues and bone that support the teeth. And if it becomes untreated, this is what causes people to lose their teeth and their teeth to start to rot. And also a fun fact, gum disease, not old age, is the biggest reason that people in the United States end up losing their teeth. All right, this picture here is from the American Lung Association, and this is a lung with emphysema. So our normal lungs that are not of smokers are pink and bright and vibrant, 
and this is a very damaged lung. So it breaks down your lung tissue and uh, many small flexible air sacs burst and form a few large rigid air pockets. So you can see here these air pockets formed on the lung and it makes it incredibly difficult to breathe. All right, the cancers that researchers have found that are linked to tobaccos are lung cancer, throat cancer, tongue cancer, stomach cancer, and bladder cancer. So that does not mean that there are not other cancers that uh, tobacco products can increase the likelihood of, but these are the ones that have the strongest studies to support the, the findings um, that tobacco causes these type of cancers. So you can see on the left, a healthy lung tissue. All right, and on the right, you see a diseased lung tissue. So this one obviously is very, very damaged. Here is a cancer of the tongue. All right, so sorry for the grainy picture. It is the best one I could find that wasn't too graphic. Again, I found it from another dentist. Um, so a cancer of the tongue, you can see the tongue there, uh, not healthy. That doesn't look like a tongue that you would see every day, not the one in your mouth. So these are some of the things you would be subjecting yourself to if you use tobacco products. All right, let's talk about the types of tobacco that are most common among teens. So I pulled some research from the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, uh, and they go around and survey schools in the United States to find this information. So everything I'm about to present to you did come from studies from the CDC. So what we have found that the types of tobacco use that teenagers are still using today in 2020 are cigarettes, e-cigarettes, smokeless tobacco, cigars, and hookah and pipe tobacco. Okay, so that was from a 2019 study um, by the CDC. So they will usually update these findings once a year or every couple of years. So as of a 2019 study, this was all of the tobacco use that the teens in United States high schools and middle schools were reporting. So you can see on this graphic here, the tobacco product use among high school students. So you can see any tobacco product is 32%. You are able to see that e-cigarettes here, this is the big one, 27 and a half percent. So this would be things like vapes or jewels. And then trickling way down, you've got cigars at about seven and a half, cigarettes almost at six, smokeless tobacco like dip and snuff and chew. Those are almost five. Hookah, uh, you may have seen lounges that say hookah lounge. Um, these are more of a social thing for people that um, most of the places that have them, you have to be at least 18 to get in. So that would explain the drop off in numbers there in high school students. And then pipe tobaccos. All right, so cigarettes. So these have definitely been around for a long time. These used to be the most commonly uh, abused tobacco product. But um, so with the studies now from 2019, the CDC has told us that each day in the United States, there are about 2,000 youth under the age of 18 that smoke their first cigarette. And each day in the U.S., more than 300 youth under 18 become daily cigarette smokers. So our cigarette use is down from years in the past because of new trends like e-cigarettes, but this is still a very alarming number considering how harmful cigarettes are. So let's look at this graphic about what is in a cigarette. Okay, so we mentioned earlier, and I wanted to reinforce now, there are over 4,000 hazardous compounds. You have got methane, which is found in sewer gas. You've got arsenic, which is commonly used as a poison, uh, lots of times a rat poison. Carbon monoxide, the odorless, colorless fume we talked about earlier when the cigarette is burned. Um, methanol, which is used actually in rocket fuel. You've got paint on the tip of the cigarette right here, which is called the filter. The ammonia that is in the cigarette. Ammonia is found in Windex and even in toilet cleaners. 
So this is kind of showing you the, what I'm trying to inform you of here is why would you want to put these things in your body? Uh, nicotine that we talked about earlier. Um, you, you've got all of these terrible things here that you're going to be injecting into your body knowingly. So this is definitely something you want to steer clear of. And here is a little more information. So uh, this source below is going to give us more details on some of the harmful ingredients. So let's check this out real quick. So we just looked at the picture and here are some other things. Acetone found in nail polish remover. You've got acids found in hair dyes. You've got uh, butane used in lighter fluid. Um, lead, which is from batteries. Um, and again, you've got all of these harmful things that you are injecting into your body. So if we can prevent putting this in our body, we absolutely should. All right. From the CDC report on e-cigarettes, um, e-cigarettes have been the most commonly used tobacco product among middle and high school youth since 2014. So after increasing in use between 2017 and 2019, um, the current studies show us that in the past 30 days, the use of e-cigarettes went down among middle and high school students from 2019 to 2020. So these, these trends are changing every year because there's new things coming out all the time. So from 2019 to 2020, we did have a little drop down. Um, so the CDC tells us about one of every 20 middle school students reported in 2020 that they used e-cigarettes in the past 30 days. And then about one of every five high school students reported in 2020 that they had used e-cigarettes in the past 30 days. So um, we dropped with middle school students from 10 and a half down to 4.7. And with high school students, we dropped from 27 and a half down to 19.6. So that is some good news there. Okay, smokeless tobacco. So the two main types that you're gonna see are chewing tobacco and snuff, okay? Or you may see some marketed that says snus. There are all kinds of little tweaks that the tobacco companies put on these um, as they're changing their marketing trends. So, but these will not produce a smoke, hence the name smokeless tobacco, but they are still very dangerous to the user. All right, so smokeless tobacco, it can cause bad breath, receding gums, tooth loss, leukoplakia, mouth cancer, red sores. And this gentleman here, he is now a speaker um, trying to prevent people from using smokeless tobacco. And you can see he had to have multiple surgeries. He lost all of his jaw here um, due to a cancer that he developed from smokeless tobacco. And this was a high school athlete that started using tobacco and unfortunately he passed away um, at the age of 19 from using a dip product so you can see the normal picture here and then him in the hospital with his medals and trophies so just a really sad story there and i i wanted to put this in just to show that you don't have to be a lifelong user of tobacco products for it to end up killing you, not just giving you a cancer, but also killing you. Okay, cigars. So I found this uh, study interesting. Um, I, I was not aware that cigars were such a popular thing with high school students. So according to the National Youth Tobacco Survey in 2019, um, this is what they found. So I wanted to see where did they pull this info from and they did a survey on um, almost, let's see, right about 10,000 students, 10,000 high school kids. And out of 10,000, they said 6.2% of the girls had used a cigar in the past 30 days. And 9% of uh, boys had used a cigar in the past 30 days. Okay, let's look at some facts from tobacco-related deaths. We have more than 480,000 United States deaths that are attributable each year to cigarette smoking. All right, and this graphic breaks these down for you to show which ones are, uh, the, which rates are the highest. So according to a 50-year longevity study from the Surgeon General's report that was put out in 2014, 
more deaths are caused each year by tobacco use than, get this, uh, from HIV, illegal drug use, alcohol use, motor vehicle injuries, suicides, and murders combined. If you just think about that, that is really overwhelming. Anyone that had HIV, okay, which is a, a virus that leads to AIDS, um, illegal drug use, alcohol use, motor vehicle injuries, suicides and murders, tobacco caused more deaths than all of those combined. All right, so the Surgeon General put this report out in 2014. I did look to update this, but they have not put out another study of this magnitude. Um, so this is the most up-to-date information that we have from a 50-year study. So it may be a while before we get another one out. All right, some other health risks of smoking. So we talked about cancer, emphysema, heart disease, but I want to go into these a little more in depth now. And also, lots of studies have told us it can shorten your lifespan by 10 years or more. So we talked about the cancers, emphysema. I also wanted to show some other things that I feel that should be alarming. It, it causes you to develop wrinkles much quicker in life. Smoking does. It can cause damaged teeth and gums. So even if you did not develop cancer, it still damages your teeth. It, it makes them rot when you're inhaling all of these terrible chemicals. Same with dip and tobacco, uh, smokeless tobacco. Reduced athletic ability. This is a huge one. So your lungs, if you're taking in um, cigarettes or e-cigarettes or vapes, that is going to significantly reduce the ability of your lungs to function properly. So for those of you that play sports, this should be a huge area of concern for you. It can cause reproductive issues, uh, especially if a mother smokes when she is pregnant. There are tons and tons of negative side effects that it can cause to a baby. So if you or anyone you know is pregnant, please do not smoke around a pregnant person. Uh, this is a very huge concern. And it, it, there are a lot of preventable um, diseases to unborn children that can be prevented if a mother didn't smoke. So secondhand smoke, does other people smoke actually harm you? When you go into this presentation on your own, I would like for you to open up these three videos and check them out. All right, they're from the CDC and the doctors. So this is going to give you some more insight on secondhand smoke from other people. All right, where is secondhand smoke a problem? So some workplaces allow you to smoke inside, public places, at home. It just depends on if people in your family smoke, in your car, anywhere that you're around someone that is smoking. This can be a risk to you. So secondhand smoke in indoor pubs and bars, it will just linger. You can see it. It doesn't escape. Uh, the air ventilation systems very well. So um, thankfully, a lot of places have put smoking vans effect indoors, certainly not all of them. But I just thought this picture was, you know, in the middle of the day showing how the smoke is just hanging out in indoor pubs um, where you can smoke. So this is downtown Chattanooga, a billiards club. A law came into effect that they couldn't smoke there anymore. And this is just a chandelier that got cleaned up um, from the smoke residue. So that's that's pretty disgusting amount of tar and smoke residue on this chandelier here. Secondhand smoke, you do um, breathe this in from other smokers when they exhale. All right, it is also referred to as environmental tobacco smoke. And it does have a mixture of gases and fine particles. And it has at least 250 toxic chemicals. And 50 of those can lead to cancer. How does secondhand smoke affect you? So we talked about how if you were the smoker, how that could affect you. So with secondhand smoke, it actually has a lot of the same risks, unfortunately. So cancer, heart disease, asthma, and increased risk for heart attack are all very common side effects. It most certainly affects children. So this was a graphic that I found online um, from a tobacco prevention campaign. And I thought that was a really 
you know, eye-opening picture. The mob smoking in the background here. And so secondhand smoke causes numerous health problems in infants and children. It can cause asthma attacks, respiratory infections, ear infections, even sudden infant death syndrome. And smoking during pregnancy, that can cause more than a thousand infant deaths a year. So these were our statistics as of 2019 in the United States. So this is all definitely a preventable, preventable this is a preventable situation to children if people just don't smoke around them. Here are some more statistics on secondhand smoke. So in the United States, the following are stats of how secondhand smoke affects children 18 months and younger. There are between 150 and 300,000 new cases of bronchitis and pneumonia each year. So this is babies and toddlers that are around people unwillingly that are smoking and it's causing these negative health effects. And there are between 7,500 and 15,000 hospitalizations annually. Okay, let's look at this study from the University of Florida. So they used rats to conduct this study and they exposed the rats to smoke. They found that the rats became dependent on the smoke and that they did with, uh, display withdrawal symptoms when they were not around it. So when you don't get that nicotine, you do have withdrawal symptoms and the same things happen in the rats. And here we are gonna talk about um, some of the media influence on tobacco. So are teenagers particularly at risk to advertising strategies? Why or why not? So in your Google Doc note-taking guide, uh, I'll have you answer these on your own. So I just want you to think about them right now. Why do tobacco companies target young people? Let's look at some of these ads. This woman on the left, if you notice, she's very attractive. She has a cigarette in her hand. You certainly don't see any signs of wrinkles or uh, any, any type of negative side effects here. And they're using keywords like luxury, right? In this one, you see people with a football looking like they're having a blast promoting a cigarette. All right. And that, that certainly doesn't look like reduced athletic ability. So they are trying to make this look glamorous using keywords here like uh, pleasure. All right, so here they're using smokeless tobacco to promote it to bikers. All right, before, during, and after, boldly go everywhere. Uh, they just come up with little, what we call jingles, little slogans that they will plug in to, to sound good to the buyer. Using another word here like unique to make the buyer or the user feel that it, they are getting something special with this product. Here are some other ads. You know, I, I love to go to the beach. This right here looks tropical. It's gonna grab your attention. A beautiful person on the front with colorful images here. And on this one, you've got snow and ice and just a really nice background. So the strategic marketing with tobacco is definitely meant to attract the user. Okay, and let's look at some celebrities that have taken a stand against smoking. This was Tom Brady's uh, wife. She used to be a smoker and she came out and said that she was no longer going to smoke. She, so she is a person that quit. Matt Damon, he was a smoker for 20 years. You may know him from some of the Born Supremacy movies. Whoopi Goldberg, she is a anchor on a show called The View and she's also an actress in a lot of movies. She quit smoking. Kelly Ripa from um, The Morning Show. She used to be a smoker and she also quit. She has a whole segment, video segment that you can watch on that when you go through the presentation. This was Jackie Chan. So he works with the CDC to make ads to try to kick the habit of smoking. Ben Affleck, a very popular actor. He also quit smoking. Tony Hawk, a pro skater. Uh, he started our extreme sports movement, things like skateboarding, and he's turned away a ton of uh, money opportunities because he doesn't want to promote tobacco. 
So these tobacco companies try to get celebrities to be on their products and they pay them a lot of money. Um, so he, he turned that away. President Obama used to be a smoker. So you can go through and watch these videos and read these articles if you would like when you go through the presentation on your own. And if you want to quit smoking, there are lots of things you can do. There are patches that you can get, um, nicotine patches that will help you slowly get pulled off of whichever product you're using. You can use a journal to help you, uh, you know, channel your feelings if you're having a hard time. You can get support groups. There are numbers you can text or call. Um, you can set a quit date, like a goal date to be done. There, there are lots of things that you can do. And so um, what I would like for you to think about is hopefully if you are a smoker, that, that you are wanting to stop. Or if you know someone that is a smoker, that you could help them get support and find ways to protect their health and to kick this habit. All right, and the scientific method. So does other people smoke actually harm you? So I wanted to bring in a little bit of science here to help us prove whether or not secondhand smoke is really harmful. This has been a highly debated topic. So the scientific method, we are going to use this uh, to help us prove that, that secondhand smoke does cause a lot of issues. So our first step in the scientific method, we are going to ask, does other people smoke actually harm you? Our second step, we are going to have background research. So what we went over today, what information did we gather to come to our hypothesis? So we're going to say secondhand smoke results in, and on your Google Doc, I want you to say things like cancer, emphysema, increased risk of bronchitis, which whatever you want to put there, you'll fill that in on your Google Doc. So you're going to form your own hypothesis by using some of these things we talked about today. Okay, our third step, we have to construct our hypothesis. So if individuals are exposed to secondhand smoke, then they are at risk for increased health issues. This is what we're going to claim. So testing with an experiment, we are going to use our rat experiment from the University of Florida since we cannot conduct an experiment together today with actual tobacco products. We're going to use this experiment from the University of Florida. So we found that the rats did become dependent and they did display withdrawal symptoms. Our fifth step in the scientific method is analyzing and coming up with a conclusion. After what we've learned today, we can determine that secondhand smoke is harmful because we have a ton of research from the CDC. We have a uh, University of Florida study on the rats to help us prove this. The rats are our evidence in this situation today. And the chart below was published by the CDC. Um, uh, U.S. non-smokers that had measurable levels um, of tobacco related products in their saliva, urine, or blood. And then communicating our results is the sixth step. Our hypothesis that secondhand smoke is dangerous, that is true. We conducted it using scholarly research from the University of Florida and the Centers for Disease Control. Um, so we can conclude that environmental tobacco smoke or secondhand smoke does harm people that are not smokers. All right, and on your Google Doc, I will ask you to answer these questions. How do you think the warning on cigarette packs affects the consumer? So if you look back at our images, you would see a warning label on the majority of those packages. I'd like for you to discuss why quitting smoking could be so difficult. And for these discussion questions, I would like for you to research online as well to help you find these answers. Um, cigarette smoking is decreasing among all population groups except teenagers. Hypothesize why there may be an increase in teenage cigarette smoking. And here, the question I'm asking about cigarette smoking, I'm including jewels, vapes, not just traditional cigarettes. Why is it um, increasing among teenagers just any type of tobacco that is being smoked, whether it's electronic or traditional? Um, you know, we saw that cigarette smoke, that cigarette smoking has went down a little bit in teens, but then we're seeing a rise in vapes. So overall, what I'm asking here is why are our teenagers continuing to use uh, tobacco products that are smoked? Why is that increasing? 
And how might you as a non-smoker encourage your peers to be non-smokers? So these are things I want you to brainstorm and answer on your Google Doc sheet and use research online to help you answer. So that is all that I have for the presentation today. So if you would please go back through this presentation to help you fill out your Google Docs note guide. You can either watch this video again or you can pull up the actual presentation to help you fill in the answers. And I do hope that you found this very helpful today. Thank you so much.